Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between nominal GDP and real GDP. The difference, of course, is inflation. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Let's get into the content. First, we're going to talk about a couple of definitions that you need to know. If you watch the video about the consumer price index, you know that inflation is a general increase in the prices of goods and services within an economy. We usually measure that with the CPI that tracks average price changes for a market basket of goods. The GDP deflator is a little bit different in that it tracks the price changes for all goods and services within an entire economy, not just a market basket purchased by typical consumers. And as you learned in the video about the CPI, the difference between nominal and real is inflation. So nominal GDP is not only GDP not adjusted for inflation, but it is also all the money that is spent on goods and services within an economy. And when you adjust for inflation, we call that real GDP. That is all the things that are produced. So if we take a look at that circular flow diagram that we know about, nominal GDP is all of the sales within that market and the goods and services themselves are what we're trying to measure when we measure real GDP. And once again, the difference between nominal and real is the price changes or inflation. So first let's talk about how to calculate nominal GDP. Nominal GDP is the value of the current goods that are being produced using the current year's prices. Here we have a fictitious economy that produces just three things, pogo sticks, skateboards, and bicycles. And for 2017's nominal GDP, we're going to use the quantities of these goods and services from 2017, and we're also going to use the 2017 prices as well. It's the current quantities and the current prices. So for 2017, we're going to go ahead and calculate the value of the pogo sticks that are produced, the 150 of them times the $50 they cost. That's $7,500 worth of nominal GDP for the pogo sticks. We have 35 skateboards produced at $100 each. That's $3,500 worth of skateboards. And the 50 bicycles times the $150 they each cost is $7,500 worth of bicycles. Add it all up and our nominal GDP for 2017 is $18,000. $500. And if we want to calculate the nominal GDP for 2022, we will now use the 2022 quantities and the 2022 prices. So we're going to take the 200 pogo sticks that are produced at $60 each, add that to the 50 skateboards that are produced at $120 each, and the 100 bicycles that are produced and sold for $180 a piece. And when you add up the $12,000 plus the $6,000 plus the $18,000, it gives us $36,000 worth of nominal GDP for 2022. So nominal GDP is pretty easy. You just take the quantities for the given year times the prices for that same given year. Next, we're going to calculate real GDP. When it comes to real GDP, we're going to use the current year's quantities times the base year's prices. In this case, we're going to use 2017 as our base year. That's the year for comparison. We're keeping all prices the same, and that means all dollars are now going to be in 2017's dollars based on this example. So if we were going to calculate the 2017 real GDP, we would be using the 2017 quantities. And since 2017 is our base year, we use those same prices from 2017. And that means for the base year of 2017, the nominal GDP and the real GDP are both $18,500. In fact, you will always have nominal and real being the same for the base year. So now let's go ahead and calculate the real GDP for 2022. We're going to be using 2022's quantities, but we are going to use 2017's prices. So it's going to be the base year prices with the current year's quantities. Let's go ahead and multiply it out. We have 200 pogo sticks at $50 each in 2017. That gives us $10,000 worth of real GDP for the pogo sticks. There were 50 skateboards produced in 2022 with a price of $100 in 2017. That gives us $5,000 worth of real GDP for those skateboards. And the 100 bicycles at $150 in 2017 gives us $15,000 worth of real GDP for those bicycles. Add all of that up, 10,000 plus 5,000 plus 15,000, and that gives us 2022's real GDP being $30,000 with 2017 being the base year. Now we can use the nominal GDP and the real GDP that we just calculated to come up with a GDP deflator. It's very similar to a consumer price index in that it tracks average price changes over a period of years. The formula for the GDP deflator is the nominal GDP divided by the real GDP 
times 100. So for 2017, our nominal GDP was $18,500 divided by the real GDP of $18,500 times 100, and that gives us a GDP deflator for the base year of 100. And just like calculating a CPI, the base year is always going to have a GDP deflator of 100. Now in 2022, we had a nominal GDP of $36,000 divided by the real GDP of $30,000 times 100, and that gives us a GDP deflator of 120 for 2022. If you are given a GDP deflator and you're also given a nominal value, you can convert from nominal values to real values using that GDP deflator. And the formula is the nominal value divided by the GDP deflator times 100. So as we remember, the nominal GDP for 2022 was $36,000. Divide that by the 120 GDP deflator, and that gives us a real GDP of $30,000, which we already calculated. You can also use the GDP deflator to convert nominal prices to real prices as well. In 1961, a McDonald's cheeseburger cost just 19 cents. And at the same time, the GDP deflator using 2012 as a base year was 16.88, which tells us that the real value of that McDonald's cheeseburger was actually $1.13 using 2012 as the base year. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about calculating real GDP, nominal GDP, the GDP deflator, and converting nominal values to real values. If you've already watched the CPI video and you're ready to practice this, head over to reviewecon.com and play the CPI and GDP deflator game to see if you can put it all together. And after that, don't forget to purchase the total review booklet from reviewecon.com. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics AP exams. That's all for now. I'll see y'all next time.